Here are five beginner tips I wish I knew before playing Cattail's Wildwood Story. Number one, the settings. For me, the accessibility settings are paused down the best way to keep me playing Cattails. This is how you either make the game extra cozy, tough and intense, or anywhere in between. You have difficulty settings for the encounters you face, various settings for how slowly or quickly your days will progress, hunting settings, and various other options to tailor Cattail's Wildwood Story to your personal playstyle. Adjusting these settings should assist greatly in preventing frustration and boredom with the game. Number two, resources. Inside the temple, the forest guardian shows you the various cats you have to recruit to your colony, as well as the resources you need to gift them before this occurs. Some of these are a bit tricky to procure, such as the snake lily and the blackberries. I don't want to spoil the game, but I will give you a hint. Some items are seasonal, and you'll just have to wait to forage or hunt for them. And some can be obtained during the end of season festivals when you spend the tokens that you earn in Coco's special festival shop. Another thing about resources that puzzled me was regarding colony stockpiles. Some of these stockpile items, such as wood and stone, are needed before beginning construction projects, but you have no tools to harvest these materials. I finally figured that once you unlock the ability to see Talon daily in order to assign squads to different territories, and you fully influence grids which contain the resources that you need, you can then choose to assign the squads to collect resources instead of fighting to gain new territory. So they are the ones who can help acquire the resources that you can't find on your own. Third is influence. One of the goals in Cattail's Wildwood story is to gain influence over the Wildwood area, which you can see is represented by 49 sections in this map grid. Sending squads to fight for territory in these areas will help you to gain influence, but there are other ways to speed this up. First, you can assist your colony mates in these battles. Second, merely by hunting and foraging in an area daily seems to also enhance your influence, so make sure to spend time exploring. Another way is to use the lavender that you have found or grown in your garden while in an area that your colony wants to influence, and as you can see, your influence will increase when you consume the lavender. Fourth, make sure to explore everywhere. Chop the grass for a chance to reveal hidden coins. Find hidden curios as well as puzzles and secrets that can award you perks called Power Paws. And embark on your expeditions during both the day and the night, as some critters and flowers are only available at certain times. Number five is the mining. Honestly, I feel like the mining is a bit more difficult than the battles with other cats for territory. You're in a dark, cramped area trying to charge up your pounce to attack hostile creatures like bats and bugs. Even on the easiest settings, I did struggle a bit, but I do have some suggestions to help alleviate your frustrations. First, after you have mined a bit and sold rock debris and gems to the cave mole, you can buy a headlamp which I highly recommend that you equip every time you enter the caves. You can also craft headlamp upgrades as you progress and gather higher value materials. Second, in your house, visit the scratching post and examine the skills. Several of these skills are very handy for use in the mines. My favorites include the lion's roar, which can actually break rocks without depleting your energy because this energy rapidly declines as you mine, and if you don't have enough food with you, you won't be able to mine for very long. You can equip the Summon Allies skill to spawn cat friends to help you battle a particular enemy. This works well in the mines. And when packaged with the Tenacity skill, this will erase the cooldown for your other skills so that you can use them again immediately. 
Keep in mind though that the tenacity skill itself does have a cooldown. Also, as you become better friends with the cats in your colony, you can buddy up and take one down with you to help you in the mines. And finally, regarding the mining, once you reach deeper levels, or rest stops as the moles call them, these are like bookmarks, so you can later jump to these levels upon entering the mine instead of starting back at level 1 again. So hopefully these beginner tips will help you with Cattail's Wildwood story. If you have any others that you want to suggest that you think could be helpful, please let me know in the comments below. And if you like cute and cozy games, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.